Hey gang, we're going to start drawing from the Mark Kistler Drawing in 3D series. The first thing I have to teach you is all about the 10 keywords of drawing in 3D. So you're going to play along with me today. We're going to start by drawing a can of peas, just a can of peas sitting out there in the desert. First thing we'll do is draw a foreshortened circle. Now we know that circles are round, but we're looking at this circle from the side. So we're going to stretch out from side to side, and we're going to smash it down from top to bottom. And that's how you end up with this foreshortened shape, so that it looks like a, a real uh, top of a can of peas. I'm just going to pull down the sides, straight up and down, but I'm going to join the bottom with a smile. And if I put a label on the can, I'm going to bend the <clears throat> lines so that I'm following the contour of the can. We'll assume that the sun is over here. And it will beam down this way. So if the sun is over here, then this side is going to have some shade. I'm going to use hash marks. But if you're using a pencil, you can just use the size of, side of the pencil to put the shade, and it's going to cast a shadow on the ground. So that's four words so far. We've got foreshortening, contour, shade, and shadow. Now for the next word, I'm going to have to draw another can. I'll draw it up here. first thing I'm going to do is change its placement by placing it higher on the page it looks like it's farther away and put a label on it there I also changed the size. I made it just a little smaller. When things are farther away, they appear to be smaller. And I also overlapped one can over the other. When you overlap two items, the one that appears to be on top seems to be closer. So we've already got seven words up here. We have foreshortening, contour, shade, shadow, placement, size, and overlap. Now for the next word, I've got to draw one more can right up here. Deet, deet, deet. Now, is that one closer or farther away? Obviously, it's much closer, or I'm sorry, much farther away. And you can tell this because I've placed it higher. I made the size very small, but I've also taken out some of the detail. I've reduced its density. Things that are very far away have less detail. So if you look up in the mountains, you see not individual leaves, but just tree blobs. And if you were painting the mountain and you went to the trouble of painting each individual leaf, it wouldn't look realistic. It would look weird. You just want to take your paintbrush and go make a big blob of paint because that's what trees look like far away. So the last two words don't actually appear on the page. The first one is attitude. There are two kinds of people in the world. People who know they can draw and people who don't know they can draw yet. But anybody can draw. So if you've got a positive attitude, you will succeed at drawing in 3D. And the last word is daily. 
Now, you may not become a professional artist, but if you want to draw, all you have to do is practice every day, just a little while, maybe six or seven hours, and then spend some time sleeping, and then the rest of your time you should be drawing. But if you draw every day, you'll get a little better. Now, what happens is, it's kind of a, if we were to put your progress on a chart, and this is ability, over time, you're going to get much better very quickly. So in a very short amount of time, you're going to become a much better artist. Then after a while, it kind of tapers off, and you keep drawing every day, and you get a little better every day. And that's what you do for the rest of your life, until you die. And that is the day that you are the very best artist you have ever been. And that's a very long time off. So I want you to spend all of this time drawing the best that you can possibly do. All right. So let us draw a simple television. We start with these guide dots. So if I'm looking at a square from an angle, I'm going to foreshorten it. I'm going to stretch out the sides and squash down top to bottom. We're going to end up with this diamond shape. And we're going to connect those dots with rat lines. Remember, rat stands for right about there. We don't worry about having perfectly straight lines or perfectly smooth lines. As long as it's right about there, it's good enough. And I'm going to follow the angles when I draw the bottom of the box. Now when I add the screen to our simple old-fashioned television, this isn't a flat screen like you millennials use. I don't even know what generation you are. You can't be generation X or generation Y. You see, in my day, if you wanted to change a channel, you had to get up and walk over to where the television was. And you had to pull these gizmos, and you had to turn the knobs, spin them around. Then you went back and you sat down, and if the picture wasn't clear, you had to adjust the rabbit ears. These televisions had these antennas on top, and they didn't charge you for television. You had to have antenna and it would pull it television shows right out of the air. And we liked it that way. That's right. Now that is your simple television with your simple television screen. And you can have anything on TV that you'd like. This is the Mr. Dawson show. Twenty-four hour channel where Mr. Dawson tells you to get off his lawn. Get off my lawn. Get off my lawn, you stupid kids. Eh, dag nabbit. There we go. The Mr. Dawson show. And I suppose that we need to have a, a plug back here. No battery operated TV for me. There we go. So that's your 3D TV. And let us draw a simple witch's hat. A witch's hat is a cone. So we just start with an upside down letter V. When we join the bottom, we join the bottom with a smile. So we don't go straight across. And we draw the brim. It's again using rat lines, right about there, right about there. So if we wanted to do a top hat, we do a similar thing. It's just like putting one of those cans on top. Join it with a smile. 
Had a brim around here. Uh, be a little more careful than that. There we go. And we could shade that just the way we did the can. And it would cast a little shadow. And we could shade the cone just the way we did. And that would cast a little shadow too. That makes it look more three-dimensional. And we can draw one of these simple candles. So once again, we start with a foreshortened circle on top. Draw that with a smile. Now what you can do is turn the paper upside down to do the top part. When you do, it's easier to move your hand exactly the same way, get the same curve. Try to keep your wrist straight when you're drawing. Don't wiggle your wrist back and forth. Keep it straight. Move your whole arm. And that will help you draw things in a consistent way. If you bend your wrist as you get to the end of a circle, you're going to have a tendency to cut it off. A little too soon. There we go. So we got a candle in a holder. Let's put a wick on there. A wicked little candle. Draw a flame. And I like the way he does the sparkle lines. At the top. And a horizon line in the background. So that we know it's sitting on a table. All right. You crazy kids, knock yourselves out. And I will draw with you next week. Shout out to Jason. Thanks for sending in your pictures. Everybody send me pictures. I want to use your pictures in the video. Thanks very much.